Welcome to Mystery Sauce. In today's episode, we're going to delve into six tragedies that shape the world. So if true crime, mysteries, and the paranormal captivate you, then you're in the right place. So please, to support my channel, please click the like button and help our content reach more viewers. Now, let's delve into today's intriguing stories. Our first one is the Hawk's Nest tragedy. In 1930, construction began on a three mile long tunnel in Southwest Virginia. The project attracted thousands of men looking for opportunities after the effects of the Great Depression. Around 75% of these workers were black men. The tunnel was drilled into Goldy Mountain, a sandstone mountain which kicked up large amounts of silica dust, severely affecting the workers' lungs and their sight. Soon after construction began, the young workers began to get sick in vast numbers. After months' work, 80% of the workers had gotten sick, died, or walked off the job. Although hundreds of white men suffered from silicosis as a, as a result of the mine, conditions for the black workers was worse still. Testimonies from former black workers in 1936 record that they were denied breaks for fresh air, and if they got sick, they were forced from their sick beds at gunpoint. More than 700 workers died as a result of the silica dust. And the public reaction for, to the tragic events led to the creation of the Air Hygiene Foundation. Silicosis was soon made a compassable condition by the U.S. Department of Labor. Our second story is the Manandaga mine disaster. Hard one to say. On December 6, 1907, America experienced perhaps its worst mining disaster. At 1028 a.m., an explosion occurred in two of Fairmount's coal company's mines. According to official figures, there were 420 men in the two mines at the time of the explosion. Though it was common practice for the workers to take their children and other relatives into the mine to help, and so that true figure is likely to have been closer to 500 people. The initial explosion killed most of the workers immediately. A second explosion damaged the ventilation system that allowed both fresh air to circulate and blocked the entrance. Without the entrance of ventilation, the mine filled with poisonous gas and suffocated those who had survived the first blast. Now, over 350 miners died. The fallout from the disaster caused public outcry, and that led to the passing of the 1910 Organic Act, which establishing the United States Bureau of Mines. That's a government body dedicated to improving the safety of mines. Story number three, Fossey Jaw. Now, in the early 19th century, a new scientific discovery was discovered. It would transform both the match industry and the well-being of thousands of poor factory workers. Charles Samia, he's a French chemist. He found that adding white phosphorus to match heads made them more stable than their earlier counterparts, but still be able to be struck on any surface. These matches were hugely popular and produced in huge numbers by low paid workers. Soon, however, it became evident that there was a darker side to the industry. So by 1858, reports were appearing of a disease commonly known as Fossey Joe, where workers were developing agonizing abscesses, fistulosis, and necrosis of the jaw, and sometimes even brain damage. Protests began to be held against the use of phosphorus, with figures such as Anne Besant and the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, both vocal campa campaigners. Now by 1872, some European countries were moving away from the chemical, but it wasn't until the early 20th century that the production of phosphorus matches was outlawed by the International Burn Convention. Our fourth story, the Aberfan Collapse. The dangers of coal mining extended above ground, as tragically demonstrated by the collapse of a spoiled tip over the Welsh village of Aberfan in 1966. Tip number seven, which slipped onto the village, was started in 1958, and it was over 111 feet tall at the time of the disaster. Now against procedure, the tip was built on ground where springs emerged. After three weeks of heavy rain, the saturated spoil heap slid, and more than 140,000 cubic yards of spoil slipped onto the village. I'm putting a picture so you can see what it looked like. The main building hit was the junior school. 116 children 
and 28 adults lost their lives as a result. In October 1966, a tribunal began to determine the cause of the collapse. And after 76 days of testimony from 136 witnesses, the longest UK tribunal in history at the time, the blame was placed on the National Coal, Coal Board and nine members of each board some responsibility. In 1969, after the findings of the tribunal, the government introduced, introduced the Mines and Quarries Tips Act in 1969 an act to make further provision in relation to tips associated with mines and quarries to prevent this use of tips constituting a danger to members of the public and for purposes connected with those matters. Now our fifth story, the Morandi Bridge Collapse. Ponte Morandi, an officially named for its designer Ricardo Morandi, its official name is the Vidaro Porcivara was built between 1963 and 1967 by 1979. Morandi was expressing concerns over the rate of degradation of the bridge. So as a result of, of environmental factors and pollution, the bridge had received repeated maintenance works since the 1970s. But by 2017, the erosion on some of the, its stays, in particular, the stays of Pillar 9, were liable to break. According to Confidential University Report in Genoa, the transport minister from 2015 to 2018, he said he was informed of the need for work on the bridge. But on August 14th of that year, it did collapse, killing 43 people, and here's a picture of it, and leaving hundreds homeless below it. The result of the analysis of the collapse have shown that it was stays of the Pillar 9 that ultimately caused the collapse. A replacement bridge, the Genoa San Giorgio Bridge, was unveiled in 2020 and will be continuously monitored by internal sensors to ensure the structure remains sound. In our last story, the Hillsborough incident. Now in 1989, the FA Cup semi-final turned from a day of sports to one of the worst days of British sporting history. At Hillsborough Sheffield Wednesday Stadium, an effort to ease overcrowding outside the turnstiles meant that Gate C was opened. Now it caused an influx of fans to flood into the standing only section of the Leaping Slain stand. The stand buckled under the extra weight causing a fatal crush. 97 people died as a result of the crush. The last one died 32 years later in 2021 because of the severe and irreversible brain damage suffered on that day of the accident. In the 1990s an inquiry was uh, led by Lord Justice Taylor and the subsequent report led to wholesome changes in stadium safety measures. Most high-level stadiums um, were converted to all-seaters, while the vast majority of stadiums built since have been built with outstanding room and aligned with the report findings. So that wraps up to today's stories. If you found them engaging, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button. And thank you for tuning in. And until next time, stay saucy.